we must also not forget the fact that women need to also um, be um, vitamin D replete and have a diet rich in the appropriate amount of calcium. And um, so what are those amounts that we commonly tell people? Well, a, the average postmenopausal woman should get a total calcium intake of between 1,000 and 1,200 milligrams per day. But again, that's not talking about supplements. That's your total calcium intake. So you could have two different women. You could have a woman who has a cup of milk a day, giving her 300 milligrams of calcium, a six ounce serving of regular yogurt per day, which gives her 300 milligrams, or a serving of Greek yogurt, which gives her 200 milligrams. She has a serving of cheese per day, giving her 300 milligrams. She has lots of mustard greens and collard greens and kale and broccoli. She eats some almonds. She may be getting adequate nutritional calcium. And then another woman may only have you know, 300 milligrams of calcium in, in her diet. So the latter woman would probably benefit from taking calcium supplements. And the best way to take calcium supplements would be to take a smaller amount more frequently as opposed to a large amount once. And the reason for this is because few things in our body are as tightly controlled as our ionized calcium. And to protect against abrupt increases in calcium, the more calcium you take, the less you will absorb. So right. it, if you need to get 750 milligrams of calcium as a supplement, it would be better to take 250 milligrams, say with, uh, if, let's say you get much of calcium from breakfast, from putting milk in your coffee, whatever. Uh, lunch, dinner, and bedtime, than taking a single 750 milligram tablet with dinner. Well, what I tell my patients to do is to really look at a cal. I give them a calculator and show them how much, but there's this rule of 300 and to ballpark idea. Each dairy serving, or it doesn't have to be cow dairy. It could be, as I said, calcium fortified almond milk, oat Absolutely. milk, calcium fortified soy. And each glass is about 300 milligrams. A yogurt, you can look at the container, is about four, three to 400. A cheese, ice cream, add it up. And then some leafy greens, you may get there. You don't need to take 1,200 milligrams of calcium supplements on top of dietary calcium. It should be all together. It would be the rare, the rare patient who would need to take 1,200 milligrams in supplement That's because correct. all diets provide at least right. some calcium. So besides calcium, we also need vitamin D, not mega doses either. We've learned a lot about vitamin D over the years, that too low is not good, as well as too high is not good and healthy. So it really should be the average person could get about 1,000 to 2,000 a day of vitamin D3, and it's lipid soluble. So if you can't remember, you could take it once a week and... So an easy thing to do is if you did get a 5,000 international unit D3 at your local pharmacy, it could be a generic, you could take that two or three times a week. And by, as time goes on, most likely you would be fine. But most women and men with osteoporosis get a vitamin D level checked, and then they can be guided based upon that as well. I know of no specific herb and all the other supplements that are important to take, yet I know there's a big push to do that. Um, the other is magnesium, and magnesium is readily available in our diet, our cereal, so it's not that necessary unless you're using magnesium to counterbalance constipation that one gets from calcium, and that's what I think is important to remember as well.